what are we doing today? We're looking at um, using apps to make more money and to increase your client satisfaction, excuse me, um, and how clients are how apps can make a big impact into your practice. If we jump onto the next slide, my name, of course, is, well, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Brian Carolyn. I'm one of the product owners here at Auto Entry. I've been with Auto Entry for uh, eight years now, since before Auto Entry actually launched into the marketplace at the back end of 2015. Um, so I'm, I'm a, a bit of an old guy in the company here. But I'm joined with our, our co host, is David Hassel over there on the right hand side, CEO at XU Magazine. David, if you want to say hello and a, a, a quick background, I suppose. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, always good to be on and do a webinar with you. Um, so, yeah, I'm David from XU Magazine. So, originally, uh, and I've still got a practice as well. So, I'm an accountant by trade. Um, and XU Magazine was born out of a lot of the content that we were producing for our clients um, around the sort of zero ecosystem at the time and all of the apps and the add-ons and, and systems such as auto entry that was linking into these platforms. And it was trying to give clients a bit more insight into sort of who they are, what they do. Um, and then very quickly realized that actually it wasn't just clients that needed this. Like absolutely everybody in the world at that point needed it because there was so much information coming out and it was also new and everyone was like, this is great, but what on earth's going on? So um, that's that's sort of how it was born and it's still going strong today. And that's what we that's what we look to do just to offer a bit more insight. Super. And of course, our um, guests of honor, uh, Susanna Whelan from Sinclair Whelan Bookkeeping. Good afternoon, Susanna. How are you? Hello, Brian. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, and a, a bookkeeper by trade, I presume. <laughs> Good guess. Yes. yes, so I'm an ICB bookkeeper. Um, I'm a sole practitioner. I've been going for about 14 years and I'm an auto entry user as well. Excellent. So as we go through the presentation today, if we jump onto the table of contents, um, we'll cover a fair amount. Um, and at the end of the uh, webinar itself, we'll have an Ask the Panel session. So we'll be going through what an app stack is, um, examples of an app stack, some awesome apps for accountants and bookkeepers, and of course, how to use apps to help you make money. Um, the where and the how of building a stack. And um, then we'll come back with David and Susanna on how apps have changed them. Um, David, beautifully from a practice point of view, but also as a business owner point of view. And of course, Susanna in the, the bookkeeping practice as well. Um, so we'll have a, a couple of questions with the guys. Uh, Susanna, of course, will be talking through her experience of building out an app stack. Um, and then we will have a Q&A session at the end for you guys. So any questions that you guys have um, as the attendees, you can pop questions in. If you, uh, sometimes you just need to move your mouse or hover around the screen, you'll see at the bottom of your screen or in your toolbar, there's a Q&A button. So any questions you have at all during the webinar, just click on the Q&A button. You can pop your question in there. We generally won't go cover the questions um, as we're doing the webinar itself. But uh, at the end, when we're looking at the Q&A itself, we'll go through some of those questions. And any questions we can't cover uh, during the webinar, um, myself, David or Susanna or one of the teams uh, will try and come back to you with a direct answer as well. So any questions you have, you'll see a Q&A button on, on, within the Zoom toolbar there. Pop your question in and we'll be able to go through them for you at the end as well. So if we go into the actual webinar itself, what is an app a stack? So uh, not a very techy question because as we can see, everyone probably knows the phrase, there's an app for that. And what we mean by that is no matter what task you need to do, um, Obviously, we're going to be looking at everything that's within the practice itself. Um, but if you think of even in the wider um, your daily life, no matter what you're doing, there's probably an app for that. And at its most basic, if you're ordering a taxi, if you're ordering a pizza or a takeaway, booking flights, even um, you've, you've probably got a screen that looks like that phone on the screen there where you've absolutely loads of apps and you've an app for everything depending on what you need to do and the very same applies within practice world accountants bookkeepers business owners whatever the task is whatever your pain point is there's probably an app for that and when we say what is an app stack it's basically building out those apps um care if you want to move on to the next one there sorry and um, basically what an app stack is is 
building out all of those apps that you have um, that relate to your business or that relate to your clients or that relate to your practice, accounting or bookkeeping. Um, and it's combining all of those apps into what's called an app stack. And we'll see a couple of examples in a few minutes as well. But they're basically all of those apps that you use within the practice. Now, by and large, uh, well, realistically, all of them are going to be cloud-based. The beauty of that is for us as an app company, we can integrate with the other apps or with the accounting packages. Um, while we're talking about accounting packages, um, Auto Entry is, of course, was acquired by Sage back uh, 2019, um, three, three and a half years ago at this stage. Um, and we rebranded. We're now Auto Entry by Sage. It just brings us into the Sage branding. But even as far as auto entry is concerned and the majority of apps that are out there within the app platforms, um, we're agnostic. So we still work with Zero, we still work with QuickBooks Online, desktop products, we have a whole uh, suite of integrations. So when you look at apps, because they're all cloud-based, they'll all talk to each other. We build the app in the background so that it talks to other apps and it talks to the various accounting packages. So you don't need to go through any serious setup or any serious learning guides. And what it allows is it brings in an awful lot of automation. Um, this, as it says, it really drives up the app stack creation. It's always a tough word to say, app stack. Um, but it, it, when you bring one app, and we'll hear Susanna even talk about it later on, when you bring one app on board and you get used to using that one app, it invariably will automatically lead to the next and lead to the next and lead to the next. And all of a sudden, without even thinking about it, you're building an app stack all of your own anyway. Um, both accountants, bookkeepers, practices, and clients can have app stacks. Uh, as an example, here in Auto Entry, we had our data entry app. Funny enough, was Auto Entry, um, good salespeople that we had at the time. Uh, we connected it with our accounting package. We connected it with our payroll package. We connected it with um, our Salesforce, even managing all of our customer details, connected it with our customer support platform as well so even just managing the business here as we were we were uh, we were a startup small business we still had every time we looked at an app or looked at a new product we always made sure it would still integrate with the apps that we already had and that meant that whole integration built even automatically on its own um, an awful lot of these apps can be mobile first it makes working really flexible across many devices of course uh, the, the downside of that is it makes flexible working across many devices in any location. So um, you have to be very conscious and your clients as well, when you go on holidays, turn the app off. Uh, business owners will say, of course, they want to be connected at all times, 24 seven. If anything goes wrong, they want to know about it. But the risk is um, that you become 24 seven turned on and that can obviously be an issue as well. Um, and they target any area that you work in. So whatever the task is, whatever your pain point is, we'll cover a couple of apps as examples on, on what the pain points can be and, and the kind of apps that can solve those issues. Uh, we've listed off some of the issues there, whether it's compliance, bookkeeping, payroll, reporting, auditing, funding. Um, there's going to be, once again, an app for that, and they can help you out in that area. Um, and of course, looking at the app stores, um, any of you who have obviously apps on your phones already, whether it's games or um, the, the Uber apps or pizza ordering or anything like that, you'll know when you go searching the app store, uh, whether it's iOS or Android and you're looking for an app for something, it'll come up with lots of results. And the app stores are the very same as that. Uh, Zero and QuickBooks will always point out as being particularly good app stores. Um, they have a huge treasure trove is, is a perfect phrase. They have a huge number of apps that are available and you pick the area that you're looking for and it'll present you sometimes 10, 20, 50 apps that you can flick through, um, whether it's different pricing or availability, free trials, they'll all have free, well, generally they'll all have free trials, um, but you can pick and choose which ones you think will um, suit your business the best. So if we move on um, to what well, an example of an app stack would be, so we're going to use a retail uh, client just as an example first. Um, and this is one that a real client might use. So they have something that's familiar, um, big blue bubble on the left-hand side, of course, is zero as your accounting package, as I mentioned, auto entry, and certainly the vast majority of the apps that are out there are agnostic. They will integrate with multiple accounts packages. So if we look at integrating with zero first, 
we add an auto entry, which is in the Zero App Store. We are very highly rated. We have great reviews within all the various app stores. Um, and it plugs straight into Zero. So with auto entry, as a, as a brief overview, and we'll, we'll go through a bit more details on auto entry itself later on, but you have a piece of paper, an invoice, a bank statement, uh, or you have a PDF email or um, a, a receipt that your client has dropped in. You upload it into auto entry. We do the full extraction and at the click of a button or automatically, all that data, including the image, goes straight through into zero. So it's populating your accounts payable uh, under the correct supplier, correctly categorized, correct fact codes and everything applied to it, including the image. So you've got your full digital audit trail there as well. And of course, as I said, it doesn't have to be zero uh, specifically, Sage, QuickBooks, and uh, we have a huge number of integrations that are available across all the various accounting packages. So if we move on, we can look at, we've started using auto entry. That's great. We have a, a bit of accounts payable going on here as well. Next, we can add in an app like Lightspeed. And again, we're looking at a, a retail situation here. It could be a coffee shop or something similar similar to that. And Lightspeed is effectively an electronic point of sale or retail management suite. Again, we'll plug straight into Zero, we'll um, integrate directly into Zero, And this allows all of your purchases and sales data um, pushing into Zero, all of your daily sales, your uh, end of day reports, all of the little tiny transactions that wouldn't necessarily get to Zero because that's an awful lot of time entering all that information in. But you now have this live connection, so everything is updating straight away. And there's no, no need to use, for example, USB sticks, um, importing Excel sheets or CSV files or anything like that. It makes that transfer from your point of sale, day-to-day -day sales, um, straight into zero as well. And of course, with MTD, uh, once again, delayed for the next cohort of users, uh, it makes all of this digital integration even more powerful when it comes to MTD because all of your transactions and all of your order trail is now in digital format as well. So we can look at going even a little bit further. If we use the next example, we've still could be zero or QuickBooks in the middle. We've gone with the Sage logo just to make it a little bit more different. Um, and we've added in something like Funding Circle. Now this is a lending platform um, that practices or um, lending institutions would use. Wouldn't be specifically for the retailer themselves, but um, it's all about the customer loyalty and speeding up the process of lending. Small loans, business loans, um, month-end loans, anything like that. Um, and it means that customers can quickly apply be confirmed for loans, be confirmed for funding. Um, the lending institution can use it. And with the full integration to Sage, there's no need for providing bank statements or providing proof of purchases, proof of addresses, proof of payments. <coughs> Excuse me. That kind of integration can make life an awful lot easier because they can now see uh, not only presenting a, a bank statement to you on a uh, the last 12 months of transactions, they can see whatever transactions they need. They have much better detail, much more live detail on what's going on. And it'll always result in a more powerful uh, interaction or a more powerful uh, relationship with funders, with banks, with um, even practices, accountants and bookkeepers as well. If we move on one more, we can go even further and this is where the app stack really starts to spread out, where we have our light speed being our point of sale. So our effectively our electronic cash register. You can use an app like Perkville, which looks after customer loyalty and referrals, or you can use an app like Deputy, which looks after staff scheduling. So you can fully automate your um, staff, whether they're what the hours are coming in, the days they're working, managing holiday time. So as a retailer, you can project forward in July, three of the team are looking for days off or three of the team are looking for holidays. Do I have cover? Do I need to organize cover? Um, gives you much better visibility of staff scheduling and reduces that printed off Excel spreadsheet stuck to the wall where you write in who's, at, who's in at 6 a.m. and who's in at 9 a.m. Plus, they'll have apps available as well. So the staff can actually view when they're due in, what's their next set of hours due. 
And likewise, with Perkville, allows you to um, integrate to um, even further customer loyalty schemes, kind of similar to uh, your Tesco club card or any of those uh, loyalty schemes. So your clients, if let's say we're back at that coffee shop example, they're buying six cups of coffee off you a week, it'll automatically give them a set and it just automatically discounts it on the tail within Lightspeed. So there's no need for those little loyalty cards and the stamps and everything else. And it just automates it straight away. They scan their loyalty card, you see the customer straight away or the, the coffee shop sees the customer straight away and they're told this one's for free. No need to ring it through. It's all covered within the apps as well. So some of the examples that we could look at then moving forward would be um, what an accounting uh, app stack might look at. Uh, oh, this little video playing through, excuse me. So some of the examples for what an accounting app stack might look at. And this is kind of a little bit more uh, appropriate for you guys, but we'll always like to show uh, on that previous example, the likes of a coffee shop or an independent client or, or a retailer, that the, it is possible to do the full app stacks for the client as well. Where it gets really powerful, of course, is for you guys within uh, accounting or bookkeeping practices. So making it super simple for clients to pay you, it, one thing we'll look at, and chasing late payments uh, it, as regards to accounts receivable. This is where it can get really, really powerful. So we have services like GoCardies, lets you automate that fee collection. So direct debit services, um, automatic payments, click the link to pay, uh, as examples of some of the services that GoCardless will provide, allows you to have a uh, nearly a fully digital payment method. So when we, as we move on, we'll see other apps. For example, if you're sending out an invoice to a client, or if you're sending out a contract to a client that they that payment is required at the end, or again, the invoice that's required at the end, your client can simply click on a link and it brings you straight through to that secure go cardless payment portal. And not only for you guys, of course, always consider that this is an app that your clients could benefit from. So some of these apps are very much practice orientated, but an awful lot of them for your client as well, that if they are sending out invoices, certainly via PDF or generating the invoice in zero, sending it through zero, you can include the Go Cardless link automatically on the bottom of that invoice as well. And it easily allows you to collect not only regular direct debits, but one-off payments as well. So any payment process, any um, payment requests that you have to any of your clients, it can all be handled fully digitally. You don't need to have the credit card machine in the office, um, certainly. Don't start, don't, you don't need to uh, accept checks because all the various payment methods go card just looks after. So you don't have to worry about whether it's American Express or Visa or uh, MasterCard or Revolut or any payment type, um, go card list will accept the vast majority of them, obviously accept checks. And then other apps like Chaser, where you can automate chasing late payments. There's nothing worse than having to chase a client who is behind on their payments. An invoice was sent out three months ago. You still haven't paid it, and yet I'm still doing your taxes. Um, Chaser is a great app that will automate, uh, as, as it says, and Chaser will obviously um, back this up, that it is polite reminders via email, even text messages, even, uh, I believe, WhatsApp messages, or, or someone would need to confirm that with Chaser. Um, but they will do the automatic chasing. Um, it's, it's never happened to me and hopefully never happens to you guys, but I'm sure uh, repeated emails from uh, a salesperson, I think, is, is the best example where you're not answering it. It was a cold call email. Uh, hey, did you see my last email? Hey, did you see my last email? Chase will manage all of that specifically for late payments. Again, integrates with your accounts package. So for example, in zero, you have that invoice that hasn't been paid. Chaser will see that information. It'll see that data. It'll automatically then send the emails and start contacting the client for you. And you set how often they contact them. You set what the regularity is. At what point do you start chasing on that invoice? Um, so it'll work away in the background as well. You don't need to start worrying about chasing clients for um, payments as much as would ordinarily be expected. So it has that full portal. And again, connecting with GoCardless. So whenever they um, do decide to pay, uh, they will simply click on a link and move on um, and 
process that payment for you. So you don't even have to do the actual payments processing itself. Moving on then, another example of an app is for mileage expenses. Now, this is something that apps like um, Mile IQ or Triplog, among others, and these apps aren't exclusive, and we're not we're not saying that we would stand over these and recommend them to every client. Just as as perfect examples of the type of apps that are out there that people not, might not be aware of, um, and these can be quite clever. Now, Auto Entry has a small amount of mileage. Um, expenses within the app, but we don't compete with these guys. We don't offer the functionality or the, the, the power that these guys can. An awful lot like SatNav, they'll measure, they'll follow the phone around. If you're driving down the motorway, it'll know the motorway you're on, where you started and where you ended. Um, and it'll calculate your mileage between then you enter in your repayments or you know your, your cost per mile or your expenses per mile. It'll calculate it all through. And again, connecting it to your accounting package means that mileage expense automatically goes to zero QuickBooks Sage, um, that you can process the payment back to the employee or back to the client as required. This is all recorded automatically. All of your records are there. Um, gives you your full HMRC digital um, audit trail. And of course, means that you're never scribbling down logs you're not having to remember where did i go last wednesday what mileage was it to that client where did i go on friday oh sure i was on holidays last week i can't remember what i was doing the week before it's all covered automatically that the, some of these apps will actually just work away in the background registering your mileage and your distance drive the distance that you drive at all times so one for what can be in the practice. You're out visiting clients and you're out driving around, meeting up with your clients, um, collecting their paperwork sometimes, uh, hopefully not collecting payments because your automatic payment um, processing tool will look after that for you, um, but just client engagement. And of course, if we move on there, there's great apps even to manage your client engagement. Now we'd never, and no app would ever um, recommend not meeting your clients as we all know it's the interaction and the relationship is the most powerful thing and being face to face with your clients is a completely different story to as we all know during covid the zoom calls or the team calls uh, it's just not the same and it's nice to be back out in the open again as we have been for about a year now um, but there was those digital meetings they, they're never going to be replaced by the face-to-face -face meeting. However, you do have apps like GoProposal and Oversuite where you can organize your um, contracts, your proposals with your clients, automate the process sending them out, includes the digital signatures that your clients can sign them and send them back to you. And Oversuite obviously as well, um, being oversee the general engagement process for all the members and all the clients of your practice. Um, you can set these up again with consistent pricing. You can include if there's particular apps that you're using for that client, if there's an extra charge for a particular service that they want to provide. So you can enter in your services and even a, a suite of packages that you provide for a very small sole trader. Maybe they'll be on package A and it'll be the most It'll be the cheapest because you're just doing you're just doing year end accounts, whereas package C might be for your um, full support, full functionality, um, bookkeeping and accounting client where you're providing a full end to end service. And it'll include costings for all the various apps that you'll be using along the way. And it this manages. Um, again, sending out the proposals, getting the signatures, having everything verified. Um, you can create professional looking proposals and they're the same over and over again. You don't have to keep finding that word doc and deleting off your last client and adding one in. And every now and again, you miss the date or you miss the name and it says, hey, John, when you're actually talking to Mary. These kind of things just make life simpler as well. It makes life much easier for you when you are, certainly when you're onboarding a new client or indeed updating your current proposals and updating your current contracts with your clients that you can resend out new versions much easier if anything was to change. Terms and conditions have been updated, it makes it so much easier to send out new proposals and to update any contracts that you already have. And then moving on, of course, when we get into the actual uh, accounting end of it, reporting and forecasting is hugely important. 
being able to know where your practice is going, being able to your clients being able to know where their business is going, where it's headed, um, being able to for, report on where you've been and be able to forecast on where you're going. Uh, and again, it, it uh, futurely is actually one of the Sage Group apps, but. As always, there is multiple apps out there that will do it, and they'll all integrate again with Zero, QuickBooks, um, and Sage being the main accounting packages. They'll pull data as we push data and pull data through to the accounts package. Um, the likes of Futurely and, and competitors will pull information through from Zero. It'll calculate exactly again where you've been, all your previous performance, and it'll project that into the future for your forecasting, whether it's operations, as it says, staff, profit trends, uh, bills, purchases, sales, tax payments. You can predict it up to three years and sometimes even more, predicting what the profit and loss will look like, balance sheet, cash flow will look like. Uh, and this can be a huge help, especially for businesses that are businesses that are growing. You can start projecting um, a couple of years in advance. Well, if sales continue going on where they're at, a profit continues going on where it's at, uh, you're going to need extra salespeople, you're going to need extra production people, you're going to need extra staff in the coffee shop, uh, you're going to need extra support to aid that projected growth. And just being able to see where that forecast is off to gives you and gives your clients a much better overview of where the business is off to. Um, you're, you can see your, your whole business, analyze across all your customers and suppliers. As I said, it'll pull all this data from the likes of Zero and it'll automatically generate all of these forecasts for you. Um, and if you've clients who are looking to raise money, as again, auto entry was a couple of years ago, we were still a startup and we were raising funds and ultimately acquired by Sage. We were generating decks for, for um, C-suite presentations, funding applications, uh, applications to banks, applications to VCs. Um, a huge amount has to be done when you are raising or when you are looking for funds. Uh, and again, these apps are really, really powerful for that because they'll give you a much better idea on where you're going and of course for any potential investors that they'll be able to know well it's been generated based on previous sales so it makes it much harder to pick through the numbers as well and it um, gives you a much better indication on when the best time is to pay and this can be something really really simple but you might not see a trend of early or late payments to particular clients uh, and you might not realize the impact of that. Some uh, suppliers might do discounts on early payments, early clearances of the invoices, for example, um, or indeed penalties of late payments. And these forecasting apps will be able to show you that as well and be able to highlight these are the particular clients that we need to concentrate on. These ones we can push back a little bit more. And looking at your cash flow, it's best to pay uh, supplier A on the 20th and pay supplier B on the 28th because you'll get the early payment um, benefit and this guy doesn't penalize you for the late payment and looking at your cash flow you'll still be able to make those payments without having any impact on the cash flow so after that then <coughs> excuse me some of the things that of course might seem um uh, sometimes might seem a little obvious or sometimes might seem a little simple uh but even just making sure you have a good online presence and of course, as always, there's an app for that. Um, you don't, of course, need a online storefront. You don't need to be actively selling your wares on the internet. Um, but having a presence there is really, really powerful. And kind of the probably the two most famous ones um, globally would be Squarespace or Wix, uh, which are really, really simple to use tools. Uh, they'll give you templates for building a website. You're just dragging and dropping photos and everything else. And um, your website is up and running literally in about five minutes. I, I, I remember playing with it um, a couple of years ago just to see what the experience was like. And it is really, really simple. And it gives you a, a very professional looking website. Um, Webflow or WordPress uh, would be two content management systems where it can manage your content. Um, we have a brilliant content writer here in the background in auto entry um, who does uh, a lot of our blog posts and a lot of our, our um, internal content that we require here does a super job. But obviously not all businesses, uh, certainly small businesses wouldn't necessarily be able to afford to have a content writer, but Webflow WordPress 
really, really good at at least giving you a good professional um, basic descriptions and content that you can put onto the website as well and really helps you copyright it, um, uh, make sure the copy is correct, templates that will make it appear professional, that it's not all, all out of sync, and they can be really, really handy tools. Next one then within the online presence is of course to have some online media engagement. Um, this is always kind of one of those one of those points that a lot of people can be a little bit worried about. Um, if you haven't got them already, a Facebook page, certainly a LinkedIn page or a LinkedIn company page, um, and a Twitter account for your business. Um, Twitter can always be a little bit unusual. Uh, we ourselves here in Auto Entry, just as an example, we're never too sure why some customers go straight to Twitter to ask us a question when we have a support chat and we have our phone lines and we have email um, support as well. So there is multiple ways to get in touch with us through the through the actual app itself. And yet some people go to Twitter first to ask a question. So we do have to monitor it. It's always useful to monitor it because if you search for your own company name, you'll invariably even find someone asking why doesn't XYZ have a Twitter page or why don't they have a Facebook page? Just having a presence there makes a huge difference. Um, and you can then start using it to engage. Start following your clients for a start. Have your clients follow you back. Um, follow other clients that you're maybe trying to uh, engage business with. Um, and then you can use services like uh, Hootsuite or Social Bee they can schedule your posts, they can reply to posts if you really want, um, they can have an automatic post or, or tweet going out on the Monday of every week or on the Friday of every week. Um, you hear in the press every now and again, some company put out a tweet that was slightly insensitive to a news story of the day. It's more than likely that it was scheduled possibly a month or two months earlier. And it just went out with a uh, the marketing team even realizing that it had gone out so they're not the be all and end all but constant engagement constant messages constant posting of some description means your clients will just naturally engage with you and other um, potential clients will be able to find you and will be able to read back on on what your service is like and what you're providing so having that online presence a little bit of engagement in social media, um, even generic posts. Uh, I'm particularly bad at posting on social media um, in a corporate sense. I'll generally just retweet a couple of messages that I see or that my colleagues send out. And then for everything else, um, if you have a app that you really like to look at, but it doesn't particularly integrate with your accounts package or with um, a particular app that you're using, there's a product out there called Zapier. So this will essentially let you connect any app with any other app. And they really, really have a huge suite of, of integrations. I'd always say, if you're looking at multiple apps, try and make sure they do integrate with each other. But companies like Zapier will be able to allow you to do that, probably with slightly reduced functionality, um, but the option is there. And then even the likes of Google Docs, PayPal, Gmail, uh, automation for busy people. You know, there's so many apps out there. We've only just listed off a couple that, that kind of took our eye when we were preparing the, the, the presentation on good examples of, of what can be done. Um, and even the likes of Zapier, they, they have ready-made workflows, um, creating invoices, digital payments, Slack chat messages, responding to tweets. Um, you know, there is lots of apps out there that might not be particularly big companies. It could be a, a college student in his, in his bedroom that has built a great app, just doesn't have the power or the resources to build great integrations. Apps like Zapier sometimes can help with that as well. So, you can also go with uh, the Zapier kind of one can be even an app for all your apps. Um, but the likes of apps maps, apps map, I'm, I'm saying app too often, um, enables accounting businesses to beautifully show your app stack. Uh, an example being on the right hand side here. Uh, this is part of a functionality within Go Proposal, where within your proposal or contract to a client, you can include the app stack that you're using, um, that we're concentrating obviously on zero in the center. And if you're generating bills or expenses, Hubdoc and Plio off to the top right there, about the two o'clock point. If you're looking at payroll, 
there's bright pay if you're looking at financial services there's other examples again all available within the zero app store um, that you can choose the app you need but including a presentation like this within your proposal or within any documentation that you have when you're talking to clients or prospective clients they can quickly see and understand what's going on and also they realize actually this is this is pretty digital forward this is really really useful i've heard of mtd i know i have to go digital you guys are already there you're clearly using all the tools this looks like the firm i need to go with and of course don't forget you can customize this per client you do not need to decide on one app stack for all your clients. Uh, you'll generally find one app stack that probably suits the old 80-20 rule. Um, you'll probably find one app stack suits about 80% of your users. Um, and you might have to have one or two smaller app stacks for a particular client type or particular business type um, that you use less often. But the idea is to try and settle on one that will uh, serve the vast majority of your clients. So if we move on a little bit, we can always look at um, data entry automation. So I do have to talk about auto entry for a minute. Um, uh, being a product owner of auto entry, I'm, I'm a lifelong auto entry -er. Um And what we do, we automatically extract data from receipts, invoices, bank statements, uh, supplier statements, uh, credit notes, bills, virtually any piece of paper relating to accounts payable. Um, you can snap a photo of it upload it via email, upload it through the website, scan and snap. Um, multiple ways you can get the invoice into us, including fetching. Uh, we integrate with all of your main accounts packages. So any accounts package that you're using, Zero, QuickBooks, Sage, uh, and we have a, a suite of smaller packages as well. Categorize, uh, you can inspect, categorize, and publish them straight through. And some of the great features that we have, like on screen, if you have uh, invoices where you require the line items for a retail store or a grocery store, maybe they're getting delivery or, or going off to um, brokers or bookers, excuse me, cash and carry, they've the five page invoice with all the items that they've purchased line by line. If you need those line items, we can capture all, capture all that too. Uh, we'll do a full tax summary. If there's a tax breakdown on the invoice, we'll automatically break it down per VAT rate. Uh, you can mark invoices as paid while publishing them through and they're marked as paid within um, your accounts package as well. We can go so far as auto publishing the documents and even with the last point that's there, uh, document fetching. So Auto entry can provide the full automation flow from fetching an invoice. So, for example, you can connect auto entry to your Vodafone account or indeed your client's Vodafone account. And when their Vodafone bill is ready on their online account, we'll fetch it. We'll automatically do the extraction of it. We'll verify all of those figures. We can then automatically publish it through to your accounts as well. So you can be working on that client. You click um, refresh and all of a sudden there's a, a brand new invoice ready and waiting there for you. So where and um, so moving on, I, I, I've realized I do tend to talk a lot, so I'll, I'll try and move a little bit quicker on some of these. Um, with the uh, where to download these apps and services, it might seem fairly obvious, but check the accounts package you're using. Majority of them will have an app store or marketplace that you can review and download the apps, or indeed Googling the problem that you have, you'd be surprised. Uh, Google's still a massively powerful tool that will be able to give you um, results and even uh, reviews as well on what the uh, app is like. And you'll be able to see independent reviews from users on what they think. And of course, how to choose what's in your app stack, read the magazine. Uh, David would be more than happy to point out how often the apps themselves are featured in XC Magazine. And anytime he's on to us here in Auto Entry um, asking us if we'd like to put in an article or put in anything, we're more than happy because uh, not only within XC Magazine, but when we go to Account Text, for example, in a couple of months, or indeed going to uh, local meetings of your ICB branch or even in Facebook groups. Just ask the people who are there. I uh, guarantee you everyone is using an app of some description. You might even be using one or two apps yourself, 
but you can be um, surprised how often someone else comes back with actually I, I use the same app as you and I use this great app which talks to it and solves this pain point uh, and just talking in among your peer groups is really really powerful so how do we make these apps make us money <laughs> i kind of worded that wrong but the huge thing about using apps like this is the efficiency gains in what they provide to you uh, an awful lot of people come to us saying oh what do i do with uh, my internal bookkeeper if i use auto entry well your bookkeeper now just has more time to spend on the more important jobs um, you can collect and communicate all of that data and in real time optimize those processes and it gives you more time back um, more importantly you can win more work improve your profitability you get a better work-life balance better client conversations you don't have to be chasing clients for pieces of paper because the client is already uploading a piece of paper you can now offer more services uh, to that client not just the basic offering you're not just filling your time with for example with auto entry you're not just filling your time with raw data entry excuse me you can offer those more advisory services as well and of course if your time if your week is full already on a single task using an app to clear off that task gives you more opportunity to grow gives you more opportunity to take on clients and grow your practice as well the side benefits or, or collateral benefits of this is that, as I mentioned earlier on, you can present yourself as digital first or, or tech savvy uh, practice. Um, I hate millennials and Gen Zers. I don't know which one I am. Apparently, I'm one of them. Um, but people who are used to apps and tech, they'll love to see that you're embracing um, on what is, um, let's say, traditionally a more conservative um, uh, um business or industry between bookkeeping and accounting, having all of these apps and having all of this tech in place, you know, your clients are going to get younger and younger um, and they'll be used to using all of these apps. You need to just be on that ship as it sails. Um, moving your current clients to digital accounting, presenting as a solution focused or as a problem solver, client has a problem, I've got an app for that. You don't have to refer them off somewhere else. You already have experience with that. You're not losing fees. Um, you might be working on that client less. A uh, client might say, oh, well, you use auto entry, so you don't need to do the data entry anymore, which means it frees up hours of your service to me. But you'll just be providing a different service to them, uh, not necessarily the service that was always there. And of course, most of these apps um, allow a partner program as well. So this can be... Um, where uh, essentially with, an, with a uh, partner program, excuse me, my brain just stopped there for a second. Um, with a partner program, you can sign up as a partner with the app or with that company. Uh, and any of your clients who sign up from there on in will benefit from a discount. Normally, uh, speaking from auto entries experience, um, your clients benefit from a discount where they use the app in-house. If they have an internal bookkeeper um, and you're just doing year-end accounts or audits or whatever. Um, so if they're using the likes of auto entry, they get a discount, but you also get a rebate, whether it's credits for, for your own usage, cashback. Um, some will even do uh, payments to charities as well. And where we've always found the best success is we would have a uh, accountant or bookkeeper coming to us saying, it's a great app, I'll use it. I have a couple of clients who would use it. So the accountant or bookkeeper is now recommending auto entry to their clients, which becomes much more powerful. Um, the client is now taking uh, advice from their accountant or bookkeeper saying, well, if they use it, I should probably be using it as well. And they get a discount, practice gets a kickback, and it's a win-win from all perspectives. Um, everyone gets to improve their relationship. The client enjoys using the package. They have more trust in their accountant or bookkeeper because they've recommended a great tool and everyone's slowly progressing forward towards a digital first um, business. So with all that said, we can loop all the way around to our um, panel discussion. And this is where uh, David and Susanna, at long last, um, you don't have to sit there in silence listening to me Twitter on for the whole time. My, my apologies, I went a little bit long there. Um, but we will start with David. Um, uh, I, I've lost a page here, but I'm trying to... Uh, my other page has gone horribly wrong. 
at, excuse me, folks. Oh, wow. Sorry about this. Technical, bear me 30 seconds. Now, perfect. So, guys, excuse me. Uh, welcome That's back. That's all right. No problem. How are you? Um, Susanna, I was, I was kind of, uh, I think I was going to come to you first insofar as um, a little bit about yourself. Obviously, you said you're, you're working in uh, uh, bookkeeping. Um, what was your journey into bookkeeping and, and how, did you, how did you kind of get to where you are today? Okay. Um, so, I, I decided to become a bookkeeper. Um, I decided on a career change about 15, 16 years ago after I'd had my children. Um, I was Before that, I was working um, for Channel 4 in London, so I had long hours, long commute, um, and I wanted something a little bit more flexible, um, working for myself that I could build up around my family um, as they grew older. Um, so I decided to study ICB and got my qualifications as a bookkeeper um, back in 2009 started my practice and just built it up really slowly over the first few years. Um, I started off mainly working um, at client premises, which was really restrictive actually, um, especially when I had to sort of fit it into school hours or preschool hours. And um, back then, it, you know, 14 years ago, it was so different. Everything was either Sage 50 desktop or it was, um, Excel. Don't say Excel. Don't say yeah, Excel. Don't say Excel. Excel. <laughs> I mean, lots of my clients didn't even have online banking. So I used to have to wait for them to get their bank statements in the post, which they would then either post to me or I'd have to pick up or they'd pick up along with all their other paperwork. Um, so fast forward to now, how that has changed um, with cloud accounting software and apps like auto entry, it's totally transformed the way I work. Um, it's freed up so much time um, to allow me to take on a lot more clients and, and just do a lot more. Super, yeah, you mentioned you're, you're already customer of auto entry, which is great, of course. Um, how did, uh, and, and curious, kind of where was the first time an app kind of struck you or when was when do you remember what it was that caused you to take on your first app and go from there yeah so I suppose my first proper accounting app would have been auto entry um and I came across you guys at the ICB summit and like the sound of of it but couldn't at that point really think about how it would work for me because the idea of saving time was great but if you're on a client's on, on working on site for a client and you're saving time you're going to get paid less and at that point I was billing hourly as well um but I really liked the idea of it and I didn't want to hold back on the efficiency I could see the benefits I could see the fact that it would you know just things like saving paper saving ink all of those things which save um benefit the client as well as me and um I just thought about how I could make it work and decided that it would be better to be able to work remotely anyway and just sort of slowly put it into practice across um, a couple of clients and, and rolled it out from there really. Super, super. And, and David, coming to yourself, um, your experience of apps and integrations, what, what kind of app stack would you guys use, whether in both your practice or even within the business of, of XU? Yeah, good question, actually. So uh, a couple of actual practical app steps. So one within XU ourselves, and this is one that sort of evolved over time. So within XU, we deal with lots of different uh, sort of apps and systems globally. So within that, all of a sudden, you're dealing in lots of different currencies, some that I've never even heard of until recently um, as well, which is which is interesting when you're getting asked to send an invoice. The euro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so all of a sudden we had we had the usual sort of uh, scenario. For example, so we've got an accounting system that we sit in the middle. So we've got we use zero, and off of that, it was then a case of well, we want to send out our invoices and we want to collect those invoices, and then we want to process the payment and so on and so forth. And how do we do that? And and it was similar to one of the ones that you showed actually. So first of all, it was a case of well, I think we plugged in Stripe so we could take card payment of people. 
And then next we said, well, actually that works. And a few people wanted a payment plan. So actually we'll set up GoCardless. So for collecting direct debits. And the nice thing is it all drives off the central system. So everything comes from the accounting engine and then that pushes out to Stripe and pushes out to GoCardless. Off the back of that, it was in a case of, uh, there's a few naughty payers, which I think everybody gets that were paying um, on any of the means that we sent out. So then it was a case of, right, okay, we need to chase that up. Um, and because we're HG Magazine, we try and use a little bit of everything. So it's a mixture of Chaser and Coalbox and it. it's a really good chance for us actually to test these systems out as well. Um, and then on top of that as well, it was any case of actually we, we need to try and collect some of this money in multi-currency as well. So then we looked at things like WISE, for example, which used to be TransferWISE. Um, and all of a sudden, we've actually got a suite of apps that sort of plug into the main accounting system. And that's just for the purpose of getting money in in the most efficient way as possible. And that's one of the things that we do sort of within XU, for example. Um, one of the big things that we do within the practice um, and one of the sort of first things we looked at, and this was similar to Susanna really, was around the efficiency and time saving and efficiency then leads on to more profit which then leads on to either servicing more people or just kicking off a little bit earlier on a friday um so there, there there was that sort of discussion and some of the obvious ones was looking at things like auto entries so for example it's like okay we're document uh processing and 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 typing up of invoices is just not for example sustainable is it so that's the the first sort of obvious type ones and then that led on to us looking at some of the specific customers that we deal with so now for example we deal with a lot of uh, sort of retail customers so we have a pre-built app stack that we can go in with our retail customers and we say right okay we know as a retail customer you're going to need the accounting system um, you're also going to need some sort of point of sale system so sort of vend or something like that you're going to need the document uh, processing system so something like auto entry um, and then you're also then going to need uh, pr uh, payment processing and a few other things as well. So what we try to do now is look at our customer base within the practice and say, well, actually, uh, who are we dealing with? And when we go to speak to them, actually, what can we present to them straight away to say, actually, look, this is your sort of area and this is what we recommend. And you might find that a few of those are then tweaked because everybody's a little bit different. But it enables us to go into our clients with something that we know is efficient and it's going to make us a little bit more money because it's profitable. We can sort of do more of it and it's just more efficient in terms of what we're doing. The client's going to get a really good experience um, and it's hopefully going to save them quite a bit of time as well. Um, and we then get to know those apps really well. So we're working with sort of a number of apps because as we know, there's so many out there, you can't work with them all. And I think that's where you have to be realistic. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and while we're talking about that awful, dirty money, um, Susanna, <clears throat> big difference on your practice profitability, bottom line. How did you find yeah, kind of implementing more apps and apps as you went along? Well, definitely, because um, it's just saved so much time that it has freed up my time to take on more work. So that has obviously increased my turnover a lot. Um, and just being able to work remotely compared to how I was, you know, sort of six, seven years ago. Um, again, it just, I've been able to take on so much more work. I'm not kind of limited to one client a day. I haven't got to factor in travel time, um, you know, and then obviously just things like not having so many boxes and folders of paperwork sitting around the office and having to print it all off and manually put it in. It's it's just really, really helpful. And I, I, as well, it, it's probably a one-off and or hopefully a one-off in our lifetimes, um, the, the shock that was COVID-19 and everyone transporting to working from home meant you could still have a viable business. Yeah, I was really glad. I'd, I'd already put most of it into place um, for most clients anyway before COVID hit. So lockdown, um, I actually grew my practice Um I was in a position to do that. I had everything set up. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't an issue. Super, super. And David, I suppose, um, conscious of the time before we, we yeah. open up to the Q&A, um, any particular areas that you think um, app integrations serve particularly well? Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I think from a sort of an accountant's and a bookkeeper's perspective, because we chat to a lot of, different types of practices when they come to us and quite often it's that question of well where do I get started as well and then once I get started what do I pick and why do I pick it and I think it's that case of well why why are you picking it so it's, a, it's like anything within the business it's a case of 
if you were to go and employ a member of staff, it's a case of you look at that member of staff and what are we employing them for? It's not just, oh, it's a good idea to employ a member of staff, so we're just going to employ somebody. It's like, yeah. what are they going to come in and what exactly are they going to do? And when you sit down and have the annual review with them, and it's a case, we've well, been fantastic. You've just sat in the office the whole time and have done nothing. And it's a case of actually, what what are you actually sort of reviewing them against? What did you bring them in to do? And it's the case, it's the same with anything in your business. So like with an app, for example, it's a case of well, what, what when you bring an app stack in, what's the point of it? So if you do an annual review with the app stack, for example, or that app at the end of the at the end of the period, it's a case of, well, did it do what you wanted it to do? And I think that's what I usually say to people first, of all, actually look at it and, and what you're bringing in, what, what are you looking to achieve with it? And then that can then help you filter through. And some of it's just personal preference because it might be forecasting, for example, and you, there's, as we know, there's Futurely and there's a lot of other forecasting tools. And sometimes it's just a case of, I like the look and feel of this one compared to another one. The tool is going to do the same sort of thing at the end of the day. So, Super. Um, Susanna, anything else you would like to add before we, we jump on to the uh, Q&A? No, just to say, really, I'm not the most sort of IT technology type of person. And but there's so much out there. So you're missing out if you're not if you're not using these apps and if you're not looking at what you can do to improve efficiencies and save yourself time and to add value. Um, I just would urge other people to. To have a look and see what's out there same as me I'm, I'm i'm bizarrely working in a tech company i'm nearly anti-tech <laughs> but they are surprisingly easy to use it's so easy they're really intuitive to use there's often um sort of free webinars or free training make use of your account managers because they're always happy to help and give you guidance yeah cool Super. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know we still have a number of people uh, on the call with us. As I said at the start, if you want to pop us over a question, you'll see in the toolbar or if you, you hover your mouse around, it should pop up. There's a Q&A button there. Um, by all means, any questions uh, you might have for myself, David or Susanna, um, do please pop them into the Q&A section. We'd be more than happy to go through them. Uh, if you need to run off, we would, of course, like to thank you for your time anyway. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And of, uh, uh, of course, Susanna and David are more than happy to do this as often as we want. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a little thank you, if you do have your phone, um, that crazy thing in your pocket that's full of apps anyway, if you're not a customer of auto entry, you can, of course, just scan the excuse me, scan the QR code on the screen, uh, gets you a, a three month free introductory offer. Uh, so you can come along to auto entry, try it out, see what you think. If you're using zero or any of the accounts packages, it is a full functioning free trial. So you can integrate it to your accounts package and get the full experience of what auto entry can do. Just as a, as a, a little thank you for joining us today. Um, but if anyone does have any questions, uh, I don't think there's any there at the minute. So obviously everything we covered was so good and we explained it so well and we answered all the questions so well. No one has any questions. But if you do have a question, uh, do pop it into the Q&A package there. Um, we'll hang on for a minute or two in case any come through. But otherwise, um, thank you very much for joining us. David, thank you very much for organising. Um, from on behalf of Auto Entry, it's always a pleasure to join these um, and to get to talk to you and all of your, your users as well. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And I think uh, most of us are going to be at Accountex as well, aren't we? If uh, anybody wants to pop along and ask any questions and stuff. Absolutely. Um, Susanna, as a well-established tech evangelist, <laughs> lover of all things digital <laughs> and electronic, um, thank you very much for joining us as well, of course. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Super. So there's no... Questions there have come in, unless someone's fervently typing away. Um, I think we'll probably finish it up there. We've just bumped into the hour. Um, so as a final goodbye, thank Brilliant. you very much, David. Leave it over to you. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a good one.